This is Scott Morse from Woody Cabinets Tips and Tricks. Today we're going to continue with our time tracking application that we're making in Excel. If you guys want to download this workbook and follow along, you can click on the link in this video's description and download Scott's Time Tracker 1 Part 4 and you'll have all the code that I've showed you guys up until this point. So let's go ahead and get started. This is the user form that we're making for our to use for our interface and our application. In the last video, part four, I showed you guys how to make this image right up here and put it in the upper right hand corner of our toolbar. Today we're going to be putting in the other two images for our minimize and our maximize. This is our restore down button. Now I've gone through and already made up all these images for you guys and you can download those. Just click on their links in this video's description and download those files. So let's go ahead and get started. What I want to do is I want to do this a little bit different than I did with this one right here. I want to uh, use a frame to group all three of these icons in that frame that will allow us to, to, to move them all around as one entity, if you will, in our toolbar. Put them wherever we want, which is going to be in this upper right-hand corner here. So let's go ahead and get started with that. I'm going to go into my developer here, click on View Code, and double-click on my user form name, Form Time Track there. And right here is the icon that we made on the last video. I'm going to go ahead and delete that. And if you guys have been following along with me, you've got some code in your user form initialize event so just right click on your user form and click on view code and if you download this file you'll have the same thing here right here is the private sub user form initialize and this is our width statement I've got with me dot width and then the application width this is where we set the size of our application the width and the height and then we put our scroll height in here and right here where it says dot frame toolbar dot width my dot frame toolbar dot width equals me dot width minus 20 and all that we're going to keep that but right now what we want to do is we want to get rid of the line of code that sets the restore down button to the upper right hand corner of our toolbar that would be this line of code right here we want to delete it but we also want to keep the end width there just so we don't have any errors okay so just delete that and go back into your user form here and run that user form just to make sure that no errors so I'm going to click on reset and run here and there it is without the restore down image what we need to do next is get a a new frame in there so I'm going to go back into my developer here and click on view code get back into my user form and I want to bring up my toolbox so I'm going to click on my toolbox icon and I want to click on frame here I'm going to come up here somewhere towards the upper right hand corner of our toolbar here and I'm just going to drag me a rectangle on here and I'm going to stretch it out just a little bit actually I put another one in there by mistake now you can avoid that by coming in here and selecting your toolbox icon and select this select options button right here and now when you click on here it's not going to put another one in there so let's go ahead and delete that one I just put in there and let's select this one and we're going to change the name of that from frame 1 to frame restore buttons okay so we got that renamed now the next thing we need to do is get rid of the border so it's no border there and our caption is frame 1 so we want to get rid of that so delete that and another thing we want to make sure we do is down here in properties under the special effect right here where it says FM special effect etched let's change that to flat now what's happened is is it's just made this flat here you see when I click off of it I can't see it now but it's still there but what I want to do is before we do anything else I want to come up here under the back color right here under back color I want to change it from button face which is the same color as our user form background to this blue color here highlight and that's going to make it so that we can see it real 
fairly easy there when we start putting our images on there and I'm also going to change the size of this so I want to come down here to the height right here and I want to change that from 12 or whatever it is when we draw it on there to something like 24 maybe and then the width I want to change that to quite a bit wider than what we got it now right now it's 18 I'm going to change it to about 65 and hit enter and you can see how it went off the screen there so let's go ahead and move that over so that it is inside our toolbar there we can see the whole thing we got some space on the other side of it there I don't want it too close to the edge but I want it a little bit of space between there and let's go ahead and set the top to something like 2 okay right now it's at 12 let's put it at 2 and enter and let's go ahead and run our user form and see what that looks like make sure we don't have any errors pop up so that looks pretty good okay now what I want to do next is get back into our code our user form here and I want to go ahead and put some images in here so I'm going to bring up my toolbox again and I want to select image and I'm going to come up here towards the upper right hand corner of our new frame that we put here and I'm just going to draw me a rectangle it could be whatever size you need it to be let me select my select tool there again just so I don't accidentally put another image in here and that looks pretty good so I'm going to go ahead and draw two more so select my image and draw two more rectangles inside this frame here now I'm not worried about the sizes on these just yet we're going to size these automatically or size these all at one time so I'm going to go ahead and change this one this one right here is image 3 let's go ahead and change this to minimize there so and then this one right here needs to be or I'm gonna make it maximize okay and then this one we can make our restore down so change that to restore down and you can put those in whatever order you want it doesn't matter now I want to select this one and I'm gonna hold my shift key down and I'm going to select this one and this one and I'm gonna go ahead and set my sizes okay the first thing I want to do is set my height to 11 okay and I'm gonna come down here to let's see the back style the border color the border style is single I'm gonna go ahead and change that to none and it's going to change it on all three of them since we have them selected there okay and the top is six let's change that to two and you can see them move up there and the width I want it at 11 also so my width right now it's not saying anything I don't know why it's not got nothing on there let's go ahead and change these to 11 and enter and now they're all 11 now the next thing we want to do is space these out evenly and they look pretty good right now just like they are but you want to make sure you got some space in between each one of these because what we're going to be doing is using a mouse move event so that when we hover over this frame we just put in here when we move our mouse over it if these are a a different color of which we are going to be changing those with a mouse move event when it goes over the frame there it'll change them back to what they are originally and then whenever you move your mouse over the image it will change it to whatever we have it set to change to so that's why that's why you need to have some space in between each one of these I'm going to keep these like they are right now um, one thing I do want to do is put this one I think I moved that one so let me put the top back to two and we could check all these if we want to but those look good now let's go ahead and start getting our actual images in here I'm going to click on this one this is our minimize there so I'm going to come down here and another thing before I get too carried away here let's go ahead and hold the shift key down and select these two right here so that they're all so three selected I want to change one more thing in our properties before I get to putting our pictures in here 
right here it says picture tiling fault so I want to keep that picture size mode okay it says picture size mode cl clip let's change that to stretch okay now you could play with the different selections on here whatever suits you it's entirely up to you but I found that picture size mode stretch works really good so let's go ahead and select on this this one right here make sure it's the only one selected and let's come down here to out uh, and find picture down here and select this icon right here with the three dots and find our picture now this is our minimize button our minimize image there so we want to find the minimize image which is this one now notice how this one is different than this one this was the original one that I made when I was checking this thing out and it didn't work quite so well for me what happened was when I drew it up in Word I, I did away with the border around it okay which left just this dash here and then when I took it into GIMP and made the background transparent it did away with the background for the most part which caused me problems whenever I did my mouse move event over it it would not change the background color of this image because it didn't have a background so we're going to use this one right here and I'm going to click on open and there's that one so now let's click on this one this is the maximize let's go ahead we should have picture already selected here let's find the maximize image here which is this one and open it and there's that one and now we need the restore down okay so we're already got the picture selected here and let's click on our restore down image here that's a GIF image make sure that they're GIF images now so that's got that okay so we should be good to go let's go ahead and get rid of this background here I'm going to come up here to back color now we got it set to this blue highlight here let's go ahead and set it back to button face which is the same color as our uh, user form background and our toolbar background there just make sure that both of these are this toolbar background and these are the same color and let's reset and run our user form and there they are now the next thing we need to do is go ahead and put these all the way over to the upper right hand corner there so let's go back into our code here and let's double click on our form time track there and double click on it again which brings us into our initialize event and right down here where we just deleted that code that line of code that set that original restore down button to the upper right hand corner we're going to do the same thing but for the actual frame that we just put in there so I'm going to say dot frame restore buttons okay dot left double click on that equals dot frame and our toolbar a frame toolbar here dot width minus dot frame restore buttons dot width and unless I got something wrong that should put it in the upper right hand corner of our user form so of our toolbar I'm sorry so let's go ahead and bring that up reset our code and run our user form and and there they are so that's how you go about doing that guys um, make sure you stay tuned for the next video in that video I'm going to be showing you how to put the code in here that will allow us to change the the background color of these images when we mouse over the top of them and then when we move off of it so like for example if we go over this one it'll change to a color that we pick and then when we move off of it it'll go back to what it is now and so on and so forth on all three of these 
so make sure you stay tuned for that video and that being said if you haven't subscribed to my channel make sure you click on the subscribe button somewhere on your screen subscribe to my channel so you can get all my latest tips and tricks as always thank you for watching and have a good day